Hello and welcome to section 9.7, which is our last section of chapter 9. We are going to be dealing with probability today. And we are going to start off by looking at the probability terminology. Now the first thing we want to look at is what an experiment is. If you think of any lab or any time that you are doing a quote-unquote experiment, you are usually looking for a result that you do not know or a result that is uncertain. Um, an outcome would be a possible result, and a space sample would be the set of all possible outcomes. Regardless of what they are, it, will be, it includes all of your outcomes. And then if we're talking about an event, then this is any subcollection of a sample space. Now the formal definition for probability of an event says if an event, which we're going to call E, has n equally likely outcomes and its sample space has n of s equally likely outcomes, then we say that the probability of the event is given by the number of outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes. And I will actually write this out as the number of outcomes possible divided by the total number of outcomes. Now, since the number of outcomes has to be less than or equal to the total number of outcomes, we know that our probability will always be between 0 and 1. If we get a probability down here at 0, that tells us that that event is absolutely positively not going to happen because it is impossible. If I get a probability of 1, then this is definitely going to happen. Okay, that it just has to occur. So as I go from 0 all the way up to 1, um, the closer I get to 1, the more likely an event is to occur. The closer I am to 0, the less likely that event is to occur. So let's go ahead and look at some examples dealing with probability. Example 1 says that two coins are tossed. We want to know what is the probability that when one coin lands, it will land head is up. And when the other coin lands, it will land tails up. If we think of probability as the number of outcomes that we're looking for out of the total outcomes that are possible, this will help us solve this problem. Now, my number of outcomes is going to be 2 because I want to get 1 heads and 1 tails. So the number of outcomes that are possible are 2. However, whenever I flip a coin, I really have two different possibilities. For, so for toss number 1 and toss number 2, I have two different um, possibilities. So when I add those two together, this is going to give me a total of four possibilities or four outcomes. So I end up with 2 divided by 4, which is 1 half. So the probability of getting 1 heads and 1 tails when I flip 2 coins is 1 half. Example 2 says a card is drawn from a standard deck. And when we say standard, we're talking about 52 cards in a deck. We want to know what is the probability that the card that is drawn is a heart. So if you think about this, my number of outcomes is equal to 13 because there are 13 hearts in a deck of cards. My total outcomes equals 52 because there are 52 cards in a deck. So my probability is going to be 13 50 seconds, which will reduce down to 1 fourth. Example 3 says a six-sided die is tossed twice. What is the probability that the total of the two tosses is 5? The first thing we need to do here is we need to figure out how many different ways there are to come up with a um, sum of 5. So I know that I can go 1, 
and 4. I can get 2 and 3. I could get a 3 on the first toss and a 2 on the second toss, or a 4 on the first toss and a 1 on the second toss. So if I add these up, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 ways to come up with a sum of 5. This here becomes my total outcomes, or I'm sorry, my number of outcomes, and I have to figure out how many different or total possibilities are there when I toss a dice. Now if you think about it, you have six different possibilities of numbers that can occur when you roll the first time, and you have six different numbers that can come up when you roll the dice the second time. So if I multiply these, these are all the different ways, um, or the total number of ways that I can get um, just any number that pop up. So 6 times 6 is 36. So my probability then becomes 4 divided by 36, which is really 1 ninth. Example 4 says, to show that the probability of drawing a card that is a heart from a standard deck of cards is the same as the probability of drawing the ace of hearts from a set that consists of the aces coming from the hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. So what we're going to do is we're first going to look at the probability of drawing a heart. Okay, my number of outcomes for drawing any heart is going to be 13. And I, my total outcomes would be 52 because I have 52 cards in a deck. And 13 50 seconds really reduces down to 1 fourth. Now my second scenario says I want to know, or I want to find the probability of finding the ace of hearts when pulling from a set that has just an ace, a diamond, a club, and a spade of in the set. So I know that there is one ace out of a total number of four aces. So again, I end up with one fourth. Example five says, a class is given a list of 20 problems to study. 10 questions will be on the exam. If you know how to solve 17 of the 20 questions, find the probability that you can answer all 10 questions correctly. Now this one is a little bit tricky because we're dealing with subsets within a larger set of data and we're still dealing with a probability. So because we're dealing with a subset, we are actually going to have to do combinations first. Our t number of outcomes is going to be found by taking a combination of the 17 questions that um, I know how to do out of the 20 questions that are total. Now, of the 17 questions that you know how to answer, you need to get 10 of them correctly. So this is your outcome. Now your total outcome, there were really 20 questions that you needed to get 10 correct on. So if you simplify these, and you can use your calculator, that's fine, you should end up with two 19 now we have a slight variation to this problem that you will also see in your homework. It says that you're still given that same list of 20 problems, 10 of those questions will still be on the exam, however, it wants to know if you know how to solve 17 of those 20 questions, we want to find the probability that you can answer exactly 8 questions correctly. So of the 10 questions that are going to be asked, you can answer exactly 8 questions correctly based on the fact that you know how to do 17 of the original 20. Again, we're dealing with subsets here, so because we're dealing with subsets, this is a combination, and order doesn't matter, okay? Um, we can use combinations on this. Now our total outcomes is not going to change. We're still going to have 20 questions, and there's still going to be a total, I'm sorry, there's 20 questions total, but we are only going to be given 10 of them. Now, 
the numerator is where it's a little bit different. We actually have to look at the possibility of the ones you know how to do and multiply that by the possibility of the ones you don't know how to do. So to do that, you're still you're going to start out with your 17 questions because you know how to do 17 of them. It's a combination because order doesn't matter and you need to get 8 of those 17 correctly um, answered. Then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that by the possibility of the ones you don't know how to answer. Now of the 20 questions, there are 3 questions you cannot answer because you don't know. And you are going to have 2 of those on this test or exam that you don't that you need to uh, include as part of the 10 that you don't know how to answer. So, 17 questions total, 8 that you know how to do, and I'm hoping that those are the 8 that show up on the exam. There's 3 questions here that you don't know how to do, and you need to be able to uh, take 2 of those questions need to show up on this exam as well. So that's where all of this stuff comes from. When we simplify this, you end up with 15 38s. Example 6 says, a college sends a survey to selected members of the class of 2000. Of the 1,354 people who graduated, 672 were females and 682 were males. If a graduate is randomly selected, what is the probability that the person is a female? So that we know that the possibility or the number of females that there were total was 672 in this graduating class. And my total number of outcomes to select from consisted of 1,354 people. So the probability would be the reduced fraction, or 336 divided by 677. The last thing we're going to look at today deals with mutually exclusive events. And these are events that have no common outcomes. The probability of the union of two events, okay, and a union... Um, is written kind of with this symbol right here. It says if A and B are two events in the same sample space, the probability of either A occurring or B occurring is given by this equation. Okay, so I have the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of our mutually exclusive events, A and B. So if A and B are mutually exclusive, then we can say that the union of a and the probability of the union of a and b is equal to the probability of a plus the probability of b. So our last example, which is example seven, says that one card is selected from a deck. What is the probability that the card is either a club or an ace? So what we have to do is we have to calculate the probability of a. And let's say that the probability of A deals with um, just one card, or the uh, card being drawn from the deck that's a club. So we'll say that there are 13 clubs in a deck of 52. Then we have to calculate the probability of B. And event B, we'll say, uh, is the fact that we have an ace. Now we have four aces in the deck of 52 cards. Now we want to um, also calculate P, or the probability of A, and this sign, the upside down U is kind of like an intersection, or in other words, the overlapping piece. And if you stop and kind of think of what's being asked, I want to know the probability of a card that's either a club or an ace, but not both. So this little notation here actually means w the probability of both events occurring. Now there's only one card in the deck that is both a club and an ace. So this is 1 52nd. So now if I use my equation, the probability of A was 13 52nds. 
and I'm going to add that to the probability of B, which was 450 seconds, and I have to subtract that overlapping um, piece, which in this case was 150 second. And when we simplify this, 13 plus 4 minus 1 gives us 1650 seconds, which reduces down to 2 sevenths. So there's a 2 sevenths chance of selecting a card that is either a club or an ace when I'm pulling just a random card from a deck. Now, for your fun fact, I'm going to ask you to check the website. Um, and I'm going to do this on Weebly, uh, but check the Weebly website here in a couple hours, probably around 7 o'clock or so, and there will be another mini video posted. And let me know if you can see this tomorrow. Uh, and I'll include your fun fact in that little mini video. Have a good night.